Good morning from Budapest. Behind me is the iconic Hero Square, the heart of the city. I've been in the city a few days now and wow, what an amazing place this is. Today I'm going to show you the top 10 things to do and see in Budapest, Hungary. Okay, number one, let's start off strong because we all knew it was coming. The Parliament Building. Look at this, the soul of Budapest. What pops into your mind first when hearing the word Budapest? I'm willing to bet you that this iconic building is one of the first things to cross your mind. The House of Parliament, which sits on the banks of the Danube River, has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1987 and in my opinion earns its reputation of being one of the top five most beautiful buildings in the world. So my dumbass had a tour booked for the inside where you can go around the interior, check out all the cool fancy stuff. But I missed it and it was sold out for the whole day and tomorrow. So I've got no tour, no tickets and I'm just left outside, yeah. So if you're smarter than me and you do manage to get a ticket and turn up on time, then it's worth checking out. I've saw the videos, I've saw pictures from the inside and it does look beautiful. But yeah, make sure you're on time and you'll be able to get in. Right next to the Parliament building you can also find the Shoes of the Danube River. A trail of iron footwear stands as a holocaust memorial to the thousands executed along this riverbank during World War II. Number two, we have the Shevcheny <laughs> we have the Sevcheni Thermal Baths. I know I've butchered that pronunciation there. I've been trying to pronounce it for days now and I've, I give up. So, yeah, these baths here, they're the most famous baths in the whole of Budapest. I think maybe there was the first ones or the oldest ones. They're something, but they're huge. Well, the building looks huge, so I'm guessing the baths are huge too. But there's plenty of baths all over Hungary. It doesn't have to be this one that you go to. But if you're going to pick one out the city, I'd go to this one being the biggest and the, the something, the something. But yeah, we're going to go inside, we're going to have a nice relaxation, maybe have a massage, sit in the pool for a bit, just relax and rewind. I'm going to have a great time in here, but I think you lot should check it out too. There's such a strong aroma coming from the building too, whether it's the, the minerals or the chemicals or whatever they do they put in the water you can smell it from a mile off when you come close to the building i'm guessing it's all the the healing properties inside that water but we'll find out as you can imagine getting any kind of footage inside the spa was extremely difficult but the seicheni baths are breathtakingly beautiful the warm medicinal water comes from a natural source and is known for its healthy and healing effects it would be a tragedy for you to miss out on this wonderful place Wow, I am blown away by that. That was incredible. I spent a lot longer than I should in that place. I was aiming for about two hours, ended up spending about four. I, f I feel like a new man. Revitalized, rejuvenized, refreshed. Number three, right behind me here, is the 3D gallery, exclusive to Budapest. Exclusive to Budapest. If you have ever been to the Museum of Illusions, which they have in most major cities, and I've got one featured on my Slo Slovenia top 10. Yeah, it's very similar to that, very similar vibes, but we've got weird, wacky art that you can get, you know, your selfies with. It's well worth checking out if you're in the area. As I mentioned, this attraction is exclusive to Budapest and really is a lot of fun. Bring your camera along and become a professional painter, artist, editor, choreographer, and so many more. The place is packed with optical illusions and 3D paintings to get involved with and the 10 euro admission price also includes a printed photo of your choice. Right for number 4 we've got St Stephen's Basilica which is just behind me there. I'm not a religious person myself but I think it's so important that you visit the churches and you just appreciate some of the effort and detail that goes into building them. And as far as churches go, as far as huge churches go, 
This one is on steroids. The Basilica is the largest church in Budapest and is named in honour of Stephen, the first king of Hungary. Apparently his right hand is also housed here, but unfortunately I didn't come across it during my explorations. What I did come across and what will greet you upon entering is the dazzling array of multicoloured marble columns that soar to the heavens. The intricacies and the attention to detail on the wall and the floors will almost make you forget to look up. But when you do, what a sight it is. The Dome of St. Stephen's is probably one of the most awe-inspiring views in Budapest. The visual masterpiece of this place almost makes you want to give King Stephen a hand. Number five, as you can tell from where I am, well, you might be able to tell, the Budapest Eye. So it's right in the middle of a park, right in the heart of the city, so you can see all your surroundings. I'll be honest, the carriages are a, they're a little wobbly, um, so if you've got a fear of heights or a fear of dodgy fairground rides, then it's, pro it's probably not for you. But it's a great way to see all of the city, you get to overlook it all, and I have decided to go on the evening too, so it is pitch black, so hopefully when I get to the top now I'll be able to see all the lights all over the city. It's just a great way to see it. The giant wheel is located in Ersabit Square, in the very heart of Budapest. With its 65 metre height, the Budapest Eye is the largest ferris wheel in Europe. From the top you can easily locate almost all of the famous sites in Budapest, such as the previously mentioned St Stephen's and the Parliament building. Right, so it's around 10 euros for a ticket to ride here, and I'll be honest, I've gone around four times already. Four times. I feel sick, so just be prepared for a little bit of a ride. Number six is going to be the Ruin Bars. These are found in the Jewish district and there's so many to choose from but the name kind of gives it away, they're a bar inside a ruin. They're pretty cool, they give off the weirdest little quirky hipster vibes. They're all decorated really funny and there's art everywhere and there's graffiti on the walls. It's, it's a proper cool place but they're worth checking out in Budapest because it's you know, one of those Budapest exclusives. We're about to go in one now so I'll show you what it's all about. After World War II and the Cold War years, many buildings in the old Jewish quarter of Budapest had been left to rack and ruin. They have since been transformed into the perfect character-filled underground bars and pubs, earning them the title of Ruin Bars. From the outside they can easily be confused with your average rundown building, but in the inside they are anything but average. Step through the doorway and into the rabbit hole of flea market furniture, weird antiques, art and graffiti, where the young, hip, artsy folk of Budapest drink, mingle and enjoy the laid back atmosphere in the coolest of settings. Number 7, Exploring City Park. This place is crazy big, like stupidly big. It's got so much to do, but it's great because you can spend like a whole day here and not cover everything. Well, you probably could cover everything in a day, but there's just so much to do. They've got the famous thermal spas, they've got castles, they've got zoos. Honestly, there's everything here. It's really nice, especially if you love nature like me too. So yeah, it's a great day out, check it out. To begin your journey into City Park, I would highly recommend making the starting point the infamous Hero Square. Hero Square is one of the main squares in Budapest. It houses one of the city's iconic symbols, the Millennium Memorial, which includes the seven chief towns of the Magyar tribes which founded Hungary and other important heads of state. The square is also home to the unmissable photo opportunity that is the Budapest Letters. So some dog just started barking at me while I was filming that last one, and the owner come running along, and she was shouting, Pepperoni! Pepperoni! <laughs> The dog's called Pepperoni, I love that, that's so funny. The park was in fact one of the first parks in the world to be made public for relaxation purposes. The park has so many things to do, including the Budapest Zoo, a small theme park, the Seychelles Thermal Baths and the infamous castle. The city park also houses a lake, which depending on the time of year you will either be able to ice skate on or explore by hiring a rowing boat. The best thing about countries like Budapest is that even if the weather's bad like it is now, because it's the middle of winter, it's just still so beautiful, it doesn't ruin the atmosphere at all. Everything's just, gr everything's great. <laughs> Everything is great. Number eight is the Citadella and the Liberty Statue. It's quite a trek up there, there is plenty of steps. It's pretty exhausting, so if you don't bring some good shoes, it's gonna be tough. The Citadel and the Liberty Statue are both located on Gellert Hill, 
and is the place to go for the best panoramic views of Budapest. From the top you'll get the unrivaled views of the Danube River and both sides of the city, Buda and Pest. There are two places that you can start your climb up the hill, at the Gellert Hotel or at the end of the Elizabeth Bridge. I decided to start at the end of the bridge. The high cop is relatively easy and takes around 20 minutes to reach the top. You'll find yourself following the winding path through the forested area, making pit stops along the way at the beautiful statues and viewpoints. When you finally reach the Liberty statue at the tippy top, you will be immediately greeted by the wonderful view of the city. It was really hard to tear myself away from this beautiful viewpoint, and I would also recommend timing it just right to get the most amazing sunset from the peak. And for number 9, home of the Hungarian kings is Buda Castle. Look at the size of this thing. Everything in Buda just seems to be huge. Like you don't appreciate how, the, well you don't appreciate the scale of these things until you stood right next to them and the towering over you. But it's absolutely amazing. What I will say though is that it's perched upon one of the hills on the Buda side of town and it's no easy trek to get to the top. It's quite a journey so wear some good shoes. I did find an escalator in one part and I got so excited I was like yes! We're gonna get to the top, no problem. Yeah, it only takes you like a third of the way up. So just be prepared for the hike. But it's a nice one, there's plenty to see. It's all very ruiny. Ruin is not a word. It's all very medieval and there's, it's like ruins, I don't know. It's a castle, so you get it, castle vibes. But it's good, it's a really, really good hike. And you can go inside to do organized tours for a small fee, I think it's around seven euros maybe which isn't bad. I've decided not to because I'm going to push forward and go to the next spot. But um, yeah, you can go inside the castle, go on a tour, see inside. The castle is often referred to as the city within a city. This landmark is a unique architectural complex with age-long history. Starting from the 1987, Buda Castle has been included on the list as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. At the time, I only knew of one way to reach the castle and that was by walking. Don't get me wrong, the hike is not a huge challenge and does contain a lot of beautiful history, but it turns out there is in fact a funicular which takes you right to the top for a small fee. But whichever route you decide to take, I'm confident that you won't be disappointed at the wonderful views from the top. I've just nearly broke my ankle like four times in a row. It seems to be that the cobblestone streets are what they used to be back in the day. I don't know the years, I'm, I'm sorry, but um, yeah, there seem to be the original authentic cobblestone and they're all cracked and it doesn't look like they're being repaired much. So just watch your ankles when you're walking around, just make sure you're looking down at your feet as you're trying to take in and absorb as much of the architecture as possible. Just please take your time when wandering around the castle grounds. The more time you spend looking closely at the buildings and the sculptures, the more and more fascinating details you will uncover. So to put things into perspective of how big this place is, I've been walking around the grounds now for about 45 minutes and I don't think I've even covered it all. Like I said, I didn't even go inside the castle so that, that could take up another hour as it is. So if you wanted, you could spend, you know, a couple of hours at the castle. And like I mentioned, the best thing is that the views from the top, oh, it's unbelievable. You can get some really good photos up here, even if you don't go inside the castle. It's worth checking out. Finally, number 10, we've saved the best till last here. We've got Fisherman's Bastion. Fisherman's Bastion. Oh, that's probably closer the first time than the second. But yeah, this place, absolutely stunning. One of the most iconic places in Budapest. Definitely worth coming and seeing. The views are spectacular. The architecture, the way it's built, stunning. All of it's just incredible. I'll show you some of the views that you get from this place too. Magical. Lucky for you, Fisherman's Bastion is only a short walk away from our last spot, Buda Castle. When it comes to architecture, Fisherman's Bastion claims the number one spot for me. Its mesmerising white colours and eye-catching detail make it impossible not to be drawn towards this place. The Bastion was built with the sole purpose of providing amazing views, and to that end it is a mission accomplished. The present day lookout towers were built in the 1800s to serve as a lookout for the best panoramic views in Budapest. 
encompassing and imposing the Parliament building, the four main bridges of Budapest, St Stephen's Cathedral, Gellert Hill, Margaret Island and of course the beautiful urban landscape of Pest. It's here that you really fall in love with Budapest. So there we have it, the top 10 things to do and see in Budapest. I hope this has inspired some of you to visit this amazing place. Honestly, it's such a beauty. I might, I'm, I might say that about most places, but this one, I really do mean it. It's been a delight to walk around this city. Absolutely beautiful. So please, please, please add this to your list and get yourself out here. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the little bell if you would like to be notified of more of my upcoming videos and adventures. It would also mean the world to me if you could leave a thumbs up and a comment down below of what you thought of this amazing place. I shall see you all in the next video.